Hey, welcome again to Analog Output. Got another module to show you this time. It is a mixer. Yeah. Um, mixers are kind of boring, but they're useful. They're, in fact, essential in a modular system. So, hey, might as well have a good one, right? And I hope this is a good one. It's, it's one that I designed. And uh, let me tell you about it. This is a, a mixer designed mainly for mixing control voltages. You could put an audio signal through it, but if you're mixing audio signals, you're probably better off putting it through a mixer designed more for audio signals. Anyway, it has three DC coupled inputs. It has five sliders three of them are attenuators for the uh the three inputs and then there's one that's a general level control and there's a bias or offset control there's a regular output and there's an inverting output and it's in Cosmo format, 20 centimeters high, seven and a half wide. Uh, if you look on the back, here's the circuit board. And actually the circuit board is small enough that you could probably, without too much difficulty, come up with an adaptation for Eurorack if you wanted to do that. Electrically, it would be exactly the same. Um, anyway, there's, as you can see, not a whole lot going on on the circuit board. There's one integrated circuit here. There's a several resistors, capacitors, diodes, etc. There's one trim pot. That's most of it. And then, of course, there's the, um, the slide pots mounted here. They're mounted on the other side of this circuit board, which a something to keep in mind about this sort of a design is that if you make any mistakes in your assembly, you want to catch them early and fix them because once you've soldered the sliders on you no longer have any access to this side of the board so if you have to fix something you have to either plan on trying to unsolder the sliders or cut them off and replace them or find ways to fix whatever mistakes you might have made working entirely from this side of the board or so I've been told by a friend anyway um, let's take a look at how it works shall we okay so here we have our mixer module we've got three waveforms coming in from a low frequency oscillator and over here on the scope we're looking at the normal output see nothing there because all these attenuators are turned down. If I turn up the first attenuator, we've got a square wave. If I turn up the second attenuator, triangle wave, turn up the third, sine wave. And if I turn up the first two, I get a square wave added to a triangle wave, which gives us a nice interesting sort of a control voltage might find uses for that. If I bring up the sine wave, it gets maybe even more interesting. So anyway, yeah, we can mix these three input waves. That's cool. Now, something I want to point out, though, is if I bring these two attenuators all the way to the top, you notice we start clipping here. The, uh, the op amp is being asked to put out the sum of two signals, and that sum is larger than the op amp can handle, and so it clips. Well, clipping is probably not such a bad thing, considering that if it were putting out more voltage, the next 
module you plug it into probably wouldn't like it but you probably don't want this kind of clipping shape to show up and so what do you do well you can back off on those attenuators and get yourself the undistorted shape okay then we bring up the sine wave and look we're starting to clip again it's getting too large again got to back all three of these attenuators down again to get out of the clipping range and this is where you might say hey what's the big deal here I mean I want to use all these I want to use these attenuators top to bottom I, I mean you know I paid for 60 millimeter sliders why I'm only getting 45 millimeters out of them um, you know of course you can use the full range when you've got only one signal but when you got three signals you kind of have to keep them below about that point there or you can put them up to the top and lower this one this is the general level control and that just reduces the gain on the mixing stage to the point where it's no longer clipping and now I can use all three of these attenuators over their full range okay so yeah this is um, a feature that I surprisingly often see absent in mixers and I'm not really sure why uh, very often you'll have just a, a fixed unity gain on that mixing stage and all you can do about clipping is limit your use of the input attenuators and I've also seen some mixer designs where you've got a general level control but when you look at it closely you find that it's actually it's an attenuator after the first mixing stage so yeah it gives you control over the general level but it doesn't do anything about clipping so I'm not sure why this is not more commonly used but I like it I like having this ability to use one control to stay out of the clipping range okay now what about this control here this is the bias so here we have our triangle you can see it's uh, this is 5 volts per division so it's going about plus and minus 5 volts and centered around 0 and when I raise the bias it raises that up if I lower the bias it brings it down so it shifts our signal up and down why would you want to do that well maybe for instance you want to drive a voltage controlled amplifier with this triangle wave and most voltage controlled amplifiers if you give it a negative control voltage it'll kind of ignore that so it'll it'll get louder here it'll get quieter there and then it'll just stay flat while this is negative so for an input for a voltage controlled amplifier what you really want is probably something like in the 0 to 10 volt or 0 to 5 volt range so if we want to take this plus and minus 5 volt signal and convert it into a 0 to 5 volt signal what do we do let's let's see let's turn this to here so we can see what we're doing a little better and I'm going to cut this amplitude in about half so yeah roughly there and then raise the bias need to change the triggering level and there we have a signal that's kind of zero to five volts and you can put that into your voltage control amplifier and get your get everything getting it going smoothly from zero to maximum and down to minimum again okay so that's a useful feature as well now 
let's put this oh well, let me show you something about this bias i'm going to just kind of turn this down to nothing and watch the bias level okay i'm going to go smoothly from one side to the other and you notice when it crosses zero it hesitates a bit see right in here it stops for a moment and keeps going so there's a dead region in the middle here and that's deliberate it means that if you want to have zero bias which you probably do frequently you don't have to get this thing set to the minimum the middle position with you know geometric precision as long as you're close enough to the middle it's going to be uh, zero bias okay finally I want to show you the inverted output we've got the the both of the outputs going on here if I turn up my triangle wave we've got two triangle waves one's the inverse of the other one's negative the other's positive and you know general level changes in both that's cool but what might be a little bit surprising initially you know if you think the output is just the negative of the in input then when you change the bias the regular output be uh, would go positive and the inverse output would go negative but in fact they actually go together now it's in designing one of these things it's very easy to make an inverted output you just take the regular output and put it through an inverter and in fact very often what you actually end up with is you have an inverted output first and then you put that through an inverter to get the regular output but if you do that the bias is going to work in the opposite direction for the two of them when you raise the bias it'll raise up the yellow curve but it'll lower the blue curve and that means if you're trying to work just with the blue curve you have to remember that oh if I want to increase the bias I have to lower it if I want to decrease the bias I have to raise it which is kind of confusing and counterintuitive and leads to mistakes it also means you can't do this let's take this and lower it to about two and a half volts and give it about two and a half volts of offset and now we not only have a regular output that's suitable for a VCA but we have an inverted output that's also suitable for a VCA which we wouldn't if we had just made the inverted output the negative of the regular output so the bias works independently of whether you've got positive or, ne positive or negative it's also independent of the gain wherever the gain is set the bias is still right there it's it turns out to be you know design wise it's pretty easy to create a variable general level it's pretty pretty easy to create a bias it's pretty easy to create an inverted output it's a little tricky to create all three they kind of interact with each other in sort of non-trivial ways so it makes the design a little bit more complicated to have it work like this but I think it's the right way to do it so yeah there you go the analog output DC mixer hope you enjoyed that and if you have an interest in building one of these things or adapting one of these things for your own use take a look down in the description for a link to the github repository where you will find schematics and Gerber files and KiCad design files and documentation and so forth go ahead have fun with it and I hope to see you soon again on this channel I've got a uh, MIDI to control voltage module that I'm going to be talking about soon and after that who knows um, but like subscribe stay tuned for that and I'll see you next time on analog output